Ozempic, Manjaro, Wigovi. If hearing these terms gives you fright, you're probably a community pharmacist in the United States because it's all anyone ever wants to talk to us about ever. They are in huge demand and for perhaps good reason. People are very interested in these medications, but what do they actually do? How do they work? And are they worth it? So those examples I just gave are from a new class of medication called a GLP-1 agonist or a glucagon-like peptide 1 agonist. And these are medications that mimic glucagon-like peptide in the body. And today we'll talk about how they work and everything you need to know. Consider this a master class on GLP-1s. I'm Grant Harding. I'm a licensed pharmacist in three states and a medication pricing expert. And I like to review medications so you guys can make better, more well-informed decisions on the medications that you buy. This video is sponsored by Universal Drugstore, trusted and secure international prescription service. The GLP-1s, how do they actually work? There's a lot of, um, I don't, I don't want to say misinformation, but I think people kind of unnecessarily make this too simple. It's actually not really that complicated. Glucagon-like peptide is a naturally occurring hormone in the human body, and a GLP-1 agonist is something that mimics that. We'll look, take a look at the structure here in a bit, but they actually look very, very similar. So what glucagon-like peptide does is it binds to receptors on the pancreas and basically tricks it into secreting more insulin. That's basically the main function. And just as a refresher, insulin lowers blood sugar, which generally speaking is a good thing. And increasing the excretion of insulin from the pancreas will then, of course, lower blood sugar. Why would somebody want to use a GLP-1 instead of insulin? Well, there's also another effect that I haven't talked about yet. When injecting these GLP-1s, it also delays gastric emptying, which means that you end up feeling fuller longer and you eat less. Then, of course, you lose weight which is the thing that everybody cares about. That is what makes this class of medication so special and so unique. A GLP will also lower glucagon secretion, and glucagon does the exact opposite of insulin, just by the way. In fact, we actually give glucagon to people whose blood sugar is so low that it becomes dangerous. I also found this to be very interesting. GLP actually helps the pancreas proliferate cells. Dying cells become repaired and it just helps the pancreas function better from what I'm able to understand here. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty. Why is there so many GLP-1s? What's the difference between them? And which one's the best? Well, I'm going to answer that here today. Take a look at this chart. First, we have Ozempic, which is a very common name nowadays. Look at the chemical name, semaglutide, okay? Down below it, we have ribosis, which is also semaglutide. Below that, there's Wigovi, which is also semaglutide. Why is there three of them? Okay, so if you take a look at this chart, basically Ozempic, uh, the, the main difference is the approval is for type 2 diabetes, and ribosis is also for type 2 diabetes, but it's a tablet, which is weird. It's the only medication in this class that is a tablet. I'll talk about that in a moment, moment here. And then Wagovi is also uh, an injection, but it's for weight loss. Now, if you go down the chart here, you see this pattern pretty consistently. Trulicity, um, the liglutide, is for type 2 diabetes. Victoza, diabetes. And then Sexenda, which is the same active ingredient as Victoza, liraglutide, is for weight loss. And you see this happen pretty consistently. Number one, why is the same chemical being used for two different indications? I'm not entirely sure. It's probably been done for financial reasons. It's like someone making a long YouTube video and then chopping it up into shorts. I've already done the work. Let's just capitalize on it and make even more money. So what happened in, let's see, let's take the case of Ozempic. Uh, the dosing for this is different than Wigovi, which is for weight loss. So Ozempic dosing, um, there, there's trials that have been shown that these particular milligram amounts are helpful for diabetes. And then Wigovi has even higher doses for weight loss. Now, why couldn't that just have been made into one pen? 
or one uh, product, well, probably could have been, if we're being honest. I do want to take one moment here. There is a product missing from this chart called ZetBound. I'll talk about it at the end. And this is a GLP-1 and also a GIP. And I'll uh, explain what that means here at the end of the video. So what the heck actually are these molecules? Well, right here I have a picture of liraglutide. This is the active ingredient in Victoza. So you can see these purple little circles here. This is the human glucagon-like peptide. And what those circles represent are different amino acids. They're kind of strung together by the body to make this GLP uh, molecule. And what you see on the like kind of off blue color here is the changes that have been made to deviate from the, what's the word I'm looking for? Naturally occurring hormone. So you can see here they add this uh, GLU, which is glutamic acid. And then there's also that C16 fatty acid. Don't worry about that. It's just something, presumably, to make it last longer. And then down at the bottom here, you see the lysine switch with arginine. In short, scientists have taken and isolated and found a useful, naturally occurring human molecule and just edited it slightly. This is very common in molecular chemistry. Um, they do this for several reasons, most notably to increase the duration. Uh, they can increase potency by doing this. Um, but those are typically the two reasons why you would want to take the structure of a naturally curling molecule and edit it. They do this with insulin too, by the way. That's where our long-acting insulins come from. Okay, take a look at this one. This is even more interesting. This is semaglutide. This is the active chemical in Ozempic, Wigovi, and Ribosis. So this is shown in a different way, but essentially what you're looking at here is, again, the naturally occurring GLP molecule with the edit or with the edits on it. So this big chunk coming off of lysine 26 at the bottom here. So this is the trick the medicinal chemists use to alter the drug's time in the body. So it increases how long it lasts. We want that. Generally speaking, we only want people to take a pill once a day or in this case an injection once a week or once a day, but preferably once a week. So we want it to last very long. Specifically what this portion does is it causes the molecule to become protein bound. And basically what happens is the molecule is swimming through your bloodstream and it attaches to protein in your blood. And then they're like, okay, we're pretty happy. I don't want to leave you. And they're like, I don't want to leave you either. And they're like, I love you. And then they just kind of swim around your body together. And eventually the molecule will come off and then exert its action. But this is a trick that we use to keep molecules happy and circulating in the bloodstream. Additionally, this portion in the upper left, um, it just kind of looks a little goofy. That is not random. They put that there because that stops it or perhaps lessens the chance of the molecule being degraded by your naturally occurring human enzymes. If anyone watching this knows anything about medication absorption, you're probably thinking, how the heck could this be absorbed through the mouth? That would get torn up in the stomach. It's too large to pass through the wall of the gut and be absorbed. That's why this has to be injected, but then there's this ribosis thing. Like, what is that doing there? How is this working? Ribosis has the exact same active ingredient, but it's formulated with sulcoprosate sodium, which actually allows it to be absorbed in the stomach, not the intestines. So that's a very interesting trick that these, uh, this would actually probably be more pharmaceutics, these pharmaceuticists developed so that it actually tricks your body into absorbing it in your stomach. This is very, very weird. Most meds are not absorbed in the stomach. And we really don't go out of our way to make them absorbed in the stomach, except for this one example. This is the only time I've ever seen that. This is awesome. This is unique, and this is cool. Ozempic dosing is titrated up to 1 milligram per week, while Wagovi is titrated up to 1.7 or 2.4 milligram per week. That difference in the dosing is how they get the difference in indication. People want to know then, can you use Ozempic for weight loss and Wagovi for diabetes? Kinda, but there's lots of other factors at play here. Any well-meaning physician could indeed prescribe it that way, and as far as I'm concerned, that's completely legal. But 
an insurance company likely wouldn't cover it if Ozempic was being used for uh, weight loss and Wegovy was being used for diabetes. How would they know? Well, I, I don't even know how to explain this. Pharmacy billing is like the bane of my existence. And there's ways that they can probably assume it's happening. And then th they will literally send someone. I'm not even kidding. They will send someone to the pharmacy. They will pull the hard copy of the prescription. And they will say, this isn't correct. We're going to take all that money back that we gave you. I I'm not even kidding. That actually does happen. It's rare, but it does happen. There's also a practical reason why Ozempic pen is like a little bit different than a Wagovi pen. And by the way, for you folks who don't know, these injections, they come in a little pen and you just kind of dial up your dose and, and, and inject it that way. That way you're not dealing with a vial, pulling it out and everything. That's really annoying. Nobody really wants to do that. But Ozempic, for example, they have actually two different sets of pens, and it's very annoying and very confusing. They have one that goes in one milligram increments, and they have another one that goes in 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 milligram increments, meaning you would never be able to get the 2.4 milligram or the 1.7 milligram dose of Wagovi from an Ozempic pen. Kind of corner the market there on these very obscure doses. Beyond billing, doctors have a hard time writing prescriptions for these things because they're so weird. Why do they have these? Two, why is there two different pens? Why is the dosing so odd? Is it once a week? How many clicks is in a milligram? It, it gets very confusing. All right, how much do these bad boys cost? A lot. Take a look at this chart. We're looking at over a G note a month, and that's pretty typical for any new medication, especially one that is a whole new class and, and honestly helps the way these ones do. I want to make a note at the thing at the bottom here. Is that bound? This is terzepatide. And this one is very unique because it has an additional mechanism of action. It's also a GIP. Long story short, I think, this is just my, my personal, my professional opinion, this is probably going to emerge as the best in the class. As you can see here, it seems to have a little bit more efficacy. 21% weight loss at 72 weeks. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Zepbound has also shown a decrease in A1C by 2.1%. If you don't know what that means, basically that's really, really good. Virtually all of these medications have the same side effects. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, GERD, flatulence. One of the weird things with these, though, is it does have a risk for tumors. If you remember, this caused cell proliferation on the pancreas and also kind of messes with the thyroid in a way as well. And anytime you do that, you have a risk of developing cancer. So that is a warning on, I think, all of these, if not most of them. So you want to try a GLP-1, but you can't find it? And maybe you did find it and it's too expensive. How the heck do you get it? Well, thankfully, I'm here to help. For the most part, compounding pharmacies have kind of ruled this space for the past couple years. But they don't really have the authority to keep doing this. Compounding pharmacies have a special set of rules that they have to follow, and most of that has to do with uh, whether a drug is in shortage or not, which the GLP ones for the most part are right now. Um, but that may change in the near future. I know that there are several companies that advertise this, but I can't recommend any of them because I don't have any experience with them. I don't know how reputable they are. I don't know the safety of it. I don't know the purity of it. Now they do have. I would assume if it's made in America, there's strict guidelines that they have to follow. Um, but I don't know anything about these companies, unfortunately. It's no surprise that drug costs in the United States are out of control and people are looking for ways to import medications from other countries, which is something I have done before. I've imported medicine from Canada to the United States using a company called Universal Drug Store or UDS. I've used this company. I've literally talked to the owner. He is a pharmacist. And I can vouch that they are very reputable and they do a really great job. They also import from India, New Zealand, the UK, and you can actually pick which country your medicine gets imported from. Using a service like UDS is actually very practical, especially when we're talking about these high-cost brand name meds like the GLP-1s. Even after considering shipping and importing the med, it's still about half the cost here in the United States. They have a variety of doses on their website to meet your needs. And they work with name brand products sourced from the manufacturers. The best part, honestly, is their 24-7 support. They don't use bots or AI or anything like that. It's like a real person who actually wants to help you. 
They offer all major GLP-1s like Manjaro, Wegovi, Ozempic. They also offer generic medications and work with licensed international pharmacies that source the medication from the manufacturers. And you can use my discount code for 15% off your UDS order. I have another video I'll link about me using it and show you how it actually works. So there we go, folks. We are now experts on GLP-1s. The next time your aunt says something about Manjaro being good for, I don't know, her thyroid, now you can correct her because now you know. I'm really glad you guys stuck to the end of this video. Stick around. I make all sorts of videos about medications.